live, folks. We'll get started in uh, just a few minutes. Those of you who are just now tuning in, while you're waiting, uh, let us know where you're watching from today. We're we're streaming live from Champaign County. Uh, put in the comment section where you are watching from. Barb is here. Uh, we know Barb. Barb, Katie. Perry, hey, thanks for joining us this morning. Anyone else hoping for a little sunshine sometime soon? <laughs> yeah. I am. I, I definitely could use some. The days of gray. I feel like we go through this like every summer here. And it's not even like officially summer yet, but <laughs> just, just day after day in gray. And I feel like every time I try to like get outside, I'm like, oh, I'm good. It starts raining as soon as I try. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie's watching from Gibson City. Thanks for tuning in, Carrie. Jennifer Wick is watching with you. Wow. Two places at once, that's crazy. Uh, we'll get started in just about a minute or so. If you're just now tuning in, let us know uh, where you're watching from today. We're streaming from Champaign County, our homes, Central Illinois. Although Sandy, I think you may be in Monticello. Yes, I'm in Monticello. Yeah, Hyatt County. All right, let's let's uh, go ahead and get started. Um, uh, thanks everybody uh, for tuning in. Uh, good morning to you all. Uh, we've got another edition of Mornings with the Museum. Um, my name is Pat Kane. Um, I'm the Public Programs Visitor Services Coordinator uh, at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. And in just a few moments, uh, I, as, as well as some special guests from the Museum of the Grand Prairie and our sister facility, the Homer Lake Interpretive Center, are going to share a few of our favorite things. But before we do that, uh, if you haven't done so already, let us know uh, where you're watching from, uh, for those of you just now tuning in, uh, by writing in the comment section where you're watching from. We're streaming live from Central Illinois, um, uh, so let us know where you're watching from. Um, let's see who is on uh, this live stream today. So as I already said, my name is Pat Kane, uh, Public Programs Visitor Services Coordinator at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, also doing other cultural and historical programs throughout the Champaign County Forest Preserve District, uh, uh, planning you know, uh, public programs for people to enjoy, to connect with our cultural history mission. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Jennifer, did you want to uh, introduce yourself uh, out there? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi everybody, my name is Jennifer Wick. I am in the Environmental Public Program Specialist with the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. I am based out of the Homer Lake Interpretive Center, which is located in Homer, Illinois. Um, if you have never been there, we are a forest preserve, but then we also have our nature center, which is kind of like a museum, but filled with natural history items. And right now we're closed to the public, but the forest preserve itself is still open. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, Sandy, what about you? You want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Sandy. I'm one of the educators at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. 
I do field trips most of the time, sometimes do summer programs, sometimes visit libraries, and I get to show visitors the classrooms and their teachers and chaperones all around the museum, and we learn about the past, studying some artifacts, have a great time with them. I've been doing it for a long time. I really miss it right now. So I hope we get to visit classrooms next year in one way or another. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. And uh, Kathy, how about you? You want to introduce yourself? Great. Um, my name is Kathy Schneider. I am the interpretive naturalist for the district. Um, I focus mostly on school groups and summer camps and things like that. Um, like Sandy, I'm missing seeing all the groups coming out to the different preserves. Uh, spring is usually our busy season, so it was kind of a lonely spring. We did get to work on putting programs up on our YouTube page, uh, but it's just not the same. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, missing everybody. Thanks, Kathy. Um, uh, even though you know we're not at our facilities, still trying to do our best to connect with all of you in a bunch of different ways. Um, so uh, the Museum of the Grand Prairie um, and the Homer Lake Interpretive Center, um, we both work as, or we all four of us work as part of the Museum and Education Department uh, with the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. Um, uh, you know, putting on a bunch of awesome programs and have these great facilities uh, that you can visit once we reopen to the public. Um, uh, Marina is watching from Seymour. Um, got some other folks tuning in too. Let us know where you're watching from in the comment section. Thanks everybody uh, for tuning in. So if you've never joined us for Mornings with the Museum, uh, this is a program that we're trying to do every Wednesday morning uh, where we have staff members on. We have a particular theme um, uh, and we are also encouraging you all out there to ask us your questions. This is it, uh, supposed to also be a live Q&A um, uh, session. So if you have any questions at all for us, curious about some things, want to know our thoughts on life, anything, leave a question in the comment section and we'll answer it to the best of our abilities. Um, so just a few things coming up in the near future before we get to a few of our favorite things and answering your questions. Um, even though the Homer Lake Interpretive Center and the Museum of the Grand Prairie, uh, we are closed, uh, we have ramped up a whole bunch of social media and digital content um, on our pages, whether it's our Facebook pages uh, at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, Homer Lake Interpretive Center, as well as the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. Um, uh, you know, we're also on Instagram, uh, Champaign County Forest Preserve District is on there, Museum of the Grand Prairie. We also have YouTube pages uh, where we're putting out a whole bunch of awesome uh, information uh, regarding local history, um, some informational content on native plants and animals, educational activities, uh, uh, staff book reviews, even for Museum of the Grand Prairie staff, uh, virtual exhibit tours, collaborative community events, fun facts, and a whole bunch more. So make sure you're following us uh, not only on Facebook, but also find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Museum of the Grand Prairie, Homer Lake Interpretive Center, Champaign County Forest Preserve District. We're out there. Um, uh, as I think Jennifer already mentioned, even though the museum and the interpretive center are closed, uh, Forest Preserve District properties and trails are open for you to explore. So make sure you get out there and explore those uh, awesome uh, six forest preserves within Champaign County, uh, but be sure to maintain a safe social distance uh, when you're coming in contact with other members of the public. And we also encourage you uh, to wear a mask uh, to protect yourself, protect others. A few other events coming up uh, at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. We have a live virtual tour of our one-room schoolhouse, one of the uh, more popular spaces on the museum campus here. Uh, that's happening tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Uh, if you want more information on that, check out the events tab um, on the Museum of the Grand Prairie Facebook page. We also have a couple programs coming up in the next couple weeks as part of our uh, special exhibit speaker series, some virtual programs um, on May 30th. Uh, we'll, we'll broadcast the program live on our Facebook page titled Casting Historic Vote Suffrage in Illinois. Uh, that program will be presented by Jeannie Schultz Angel, who is a historian um, and director of learning um, and educational experiences at Naper Settlement in Naperville, Illinois. Again, that program is on May 30th. I've uh, got another program coming up just a week after that on June 7th, uh, where we'll put on a virtual program titled History Brought to Life, uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Uh, Laura Keyes, who is a historian and professional first-person interpreter, is going to take on the role of suffragist Elizabeth Cady Stanton and present uh, that awesome, engaging program. Uh, again, more info about those programs can be found 
um, on our museum events tab uh, on our Facebook page. Okay, um, Alice is watching from Urbana. Thanks for tuning in. Mindy is also watching. Um, uh, thanks to everybody for watching today. Let's get into a few of our favorite things. So uh, before we started this, uh, I asked staff members out there uh, who would like uh, you know to join us on this and got a whole bunch of uh, responses. And we're gonna share a few of our favorite things. Uh, these folks, as well as myself, we're gonna describe a favorite object, a natural specimen, um, uh, and even um, a live animal as well. Too. We're gonna see a live animal here in a few moments. Um, and we're gonna talk about why we chose that thing, uh, what it means to us, uh, why we love it, so on and so forth. So with that, I think Jennifer, uh, Jennifer is going to go first. Jennifer, do you want to share with us your favorite thing? Yeah, sure. So um, my favorite thing that I'm choosing today is going to be from um, at Homer Lake Forest Preserve. So I'm going to share my screen and show some photos. There we go. So if you've never been to Homer Lake Interpretive Center, my favorite things that in the interpretive center probably if I had to pick would be our bird feeder area. So you can see this is the view from inside. So normally we have a nice bench inside where you can um, view the birds from indoors. But right now, since our facility is closed, you can't come indoors, but you can still sit outside and watch them if you want to. And this is my favorite thing. Um, it's always interesting to just sit and watch. We have several different feeders and different kinds of feeders. So they attract all different kinds of birds. And right now is a really interesting time to be watching the bird feeders because there's a lot of spring migratory birds coming through. So you get a chance to see them up close and mostly not moving around as much as they normally do. And the great thing with bird feeders is almost, you know, if you put one out and you live anywhere where you regularly see birds, you'll probably get birds to your bird feeder. Uh, and it's a great thing you can do from home right now, too, if you're not able, if you're not leaving your homes. So in this picture, we've got a brown headed cowbird over here. There's a rose breasted grosbeak over there. We've got two indigo buntings and a um, house sparrow probably right here. And that's a pretty typical display of what we normally see. And this is another view from one of the other feeder areas that we have. I think we have like 12 bird feeders back there and they have a variety of seeds in them to support and attract different species. Um, because some birds eat only seeds, some of them also eat insects, and we actually have a seed mix that has mealworms in it too, so those insectivorous birds can get their insects. Um, so right here, we've got a Baltimore Oriole right in the front, nice and pretty, flashy, um, orange and yellow, and then two more indigo buntings. And this is just, you know, I have a short video too, where you can kind of just get an example of what it's like to sit back there. And the bird feeders are my favorite thing because it gives you an opportunity to observe wildlife in a way that's you know, not disturbing to them. They're super calm and enjoying themselves, eating some uh, yummy seed. And it's just really calming. And um, it's a good way to also get better at IDing birds because you can actually see them for more than just like a second at a time. So the bird feeders are definitely my favorite thing if I had to pick at the Homer Lake Forest Preserve. Um, and with that, I think I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and turn it back over to everybody. Yeah. So I, I like, uh, I like, when I'm at the interpretive center, one of my favorite things to do is to sit on that that bench that you guys have that's out looking, overlooking like the bird feeder area. And you guys also, um, there's speakers that play the sounds from outside, is that correct? Yeah, so we have outdoor speakers. So um, if you are just inside, you can still hear the birds even though 
you can't, you know, you're not actually outside. And we don't really have a sitting area particular right now outside in the bird feeder area, but you can, you know, bring a chair, set up wherever you want and, you know, sit in the grass. You can sit on the edge of the building or we have a porch area too where you're welcome to sit and just watch the birds. We also have a waterfall that is running as well. So birds will come and drink water and other critters too. So it's a really peaceful area. Oh yeah, yeah, very, very peaceful for sure. Well, thanks Jennifer. Um, Barb says she loves the bird feeders too. So we got, we got more lovers of the bird feeders yeah. out there. Um, uh, if you have any questions for those of you watching out there, let us know your questions in the comment section, but we're going to go on um, uh, to our next favorite thing from one of our other guests. And I think Sandy's up next. Um, so Sandy, I'm going to share my screen because I have uh, your photos here of your favorite thing. Okay. So I do, I do lots of school field trips. And what I always try to do is help students make the connection between their life and the objects that we're looking at, what we're studying for the curriculum of the day. This is one of my favorite ones to use when I have a chance. And so what I'll do is say, so boys and girls, let's look at this artifact and try to see what we think it is. So it's made from iron, just like the skillet that we passed around. And it has three feet on the bottom, just like the skillet does. So we all know where it's sitting. So if I were to open up a can of soup and pour into here, it would get hot sitting by the fire, but it would be so gross and disgusting that I would not want to eat it. So it's not very good for cooking soup. But if I put something else in it like this, and now my hand is going between the semicircles that we see on the right side of the screen. And I say, now we have to wait and wait and wait for a couple minutes, and then it does its trick. And then I can turn my hand backwards and the other side of my hand is facing out. So now I wait and wait patiently a couple more minutes. I take it out and both sides are a wonderful golden brown color. You have one of these objects at home, but it doesn't look at all like this anymore. And yours is usually in the kitchen. And the most common time that most of us use it is in the morning at breakfast time. So in a nice silent whisper on the count of three, tell me what it is. One, two, three. That's right, it's a toaster. Isn't that cool? Now, this toaster and your toaster work differently. Yours works with electricity. This one works with the fire, but they do the same thing. So looking at an object for boys and girls is really a great way for them to tie something to their, their life now. So we look at this one and we think, well, yes, I can do one slice at a time. But if we look at the second image that Pat's going to put up. So Pat, you can shake. Oh, there, so there we have it. There we go. Now we can do three slices at a time. So even though a lot of times people think, oh, wow, the people that lived a long time ago, they didn't have this, they didn't have that, they really didn't have a lot of cool stuff. They did have a lot of cool stuff. They were very creative. And just like we today are still being creative. And I often tell children it would be a good thing to take camping with them. So as you help, uh, help your the other youngsters in your life kind of try to make a make connection to whatever you're trying to tell them about your past. Using artifacts is a great example. And if you join on any of our virtual tours or you go on our website and you can see photographs of different exhibits that we have, helping those people to explore by trying to look at an object and say, what do you think it is, is a great way to connect. So next time you get to the museum, please pay really good attention to some of the objects and let us know some of your favorite ones. And if you ever have a question about an object, you can always leave it at the front desk and one of us will get back to you with the best answer we can come up with. Thanks, yeah. Pat. Yeah, thank you, Sandy. Um, you know, and we can, we can also answer your questions that you may have too, if you're interested, you know, send us a message on our Facebook page here or 
you know, shoot us, um, you know, an email, find our emails at our website, museumofgrandprairie.org, and a whole bunch more. And I, I really like that you chose this object, Sandy, because it, it shows that, uh, you know, we can still connect to it because we still have a version of this. It's, it's got a whole bunch more advancements than this piece of iron, but, um, you know, we still use a toaster. And it's, it's cool to see the evolution of technology uh, over the course of time. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is on these two photos, uh, this photo here, down at the bottom, you'll see some numbers and uh, what looks like a ruler. Um, uh, those numbers are object ID numbers that our collections department uses uh, to track uh, each one of our objects within our collection. We have uh, uh, 26,000 plus uh, objects and catalog records within our museum's collection. So uh, this one is a part of our museum's permanent collection, a toaster from the 19th century. This is a picture I just took off of Google Images just to show uh, you know, a piece of bread in the toaster. Um, and this is another toaster within our collection, has those object ID numbers at the bottom. Um, uh, and uh, it's a toaster. So yeah. So thank you, Sandy. Uh, all right. Um, Mindy says, love the toasters. Mindy is a, a blacksmith herself, I know. So I wonder if she's ever made a toaster out of forged iron. Okay. Uh, uh, next up, uh, I think, is Kathy. And Kathy has a special guest of her own, I think. A yeah. special guest of her own that she's going to share. So go ahead. Great. Thanks, Pat. Um, so I was trying to think of favorite things in the collection, the, the um, Forest Preserves collection, and there's so much variety, it was really hard, but I do have a soft spot because um, we have five live animals that we use within our education programs, and it's part of my job to take care of them. So my favorite thing is actually with me right here because he came to spend his quarantine with me, his shelter in place with me at home, and it is our ornate box turtle. Now, all five of our education animals are native species to Illinois, and they help us in our programs to help connect our audience to what our topic is. And this helps connect them with the animals in Illinois. Now, the ornate box turtle is actually a threatened species within the state. So he is a great ambassador to teach all the groups that come through about this really cool species. Now, like other box turtles, they like to be on land. Ornate box turtles really like the prairie areas and drier areas. And like all box turtles, the reason they have that name is they have a special hinge you can see right across here that lets them close up their shell even more for protection. So if he were to get scared or something like that, he could pull into his shell and even close up the front so you couldn't get to his head. Now, our box turtle here, he came to us in about 2008 from a different nature center. He was already full grown. So we think he is about uh, 20 to 25 years old already. They can live up to 40 years though. So he still has a lot of time with us. And we know that this box turtle is a male because the male box turtles have bright red eyes. I'm gonna, <laughs> this a, I have a turtle right there for Korea. Now, he has a lot of personality and is a favorite with groups. Um, he allows kids to see up close what they probably wouldn't be able to find in the wild. Um, yeah, so he's used in a lot of uh, programs where he gets to meet all of the public. Um, we think that he probably, our five animals, met over a thousand people last year through our programs. And they just really help introduce the um, people coming to get a better appreciation and connection with the animals we have here in Illinois. Yeah. So yeah, this is our ornate box turtle. That's awesome. Um, Kathy, does I don't know if you mentioned this already, but does the box turtle have a name? He doesn't have a name. That's a really good question. Um, we don't name our animals since they are representing wild animals and wild animals don't have a name. Um, but 
we we have affectionate little names and stuff and he has a ton of personality and if you want to see more of his personality we actually put a great video up on our YouTube page called Mission Box Turtle. And it really shows off his personality well and gives you a lot of information about what he likes. Yeah, that's a um, that's a really well done video. It's, it's awesome. Um, so as Kathy said, if you haven't done so already, check out that video. And I think it's up, is it up on the Champaign County Forest Preserve District YouTube page? Is that correct? Yep, it's on um, CCFPD's YouTube page. Cool, cool. Yeah. So check out that video of the box turtle. Uh, learn a little bit more about him and his awesome personality. Um, okay. All right. Well, um, thank you, Kathy. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, Katie asked, does he have a name? Um, I think we asked that question at the same time. So um, uh, if you have any more questions, you know, for us, feel free to leave them in the comment section. But um, I'm going to show. Um, uh, my favorite thing, I guess it's things because it's two of basically the same thing, but um, I guess I should say that I'm cheating with this because I did this. We had our few, a few of our favorite things part one last week, um, and this is part two. So I have I've, I've shared multiple things, so maybe that's not not quite fair. But um, uh, anyways, uh, we have here. These are Sandy's toasters from before that she talked about. But I chose uh, some things that struck me uh, when I first visited the museum uh, some, some years back. Um, and uh, these are um, some, some swords. Uh, and these swords are on display um, in our Champaign County's Lincoln exhibit, uh, which focuses on Abraham Lincoln's travels uh, throughout Champaign County on the 8th Judicial Circuit uh, for about 20 years uh, when he was practicing law uh, prior to uh, you know him uh, becoming the 16th president of the United States of America, um, and also in that exhibit, uh, focused on uh, Abraham Lincoln, there is a section on Champaign County's involvement in the Civil War. Uh, over 2,200 uh, individuals from Champaign County served in the Civil War, and we have their names listed downstairs in the exhibit space. And then also in that same case are these two swords, and one of those individuals. Uh, who served in the Civil War from Champaign County was a guy by the name of Samuel T. Busey. And this top sword uh, up top here is Busey's ceremonial sword uh, from right around the time of 1860 uh, that he would uh, wear, you know, in more uh, professional, I guess, ceremonies um, uh, that had to do with the military. And the, and the sword below is Busey's uh, battle sword, again, from right around the time of 1860 that would be uh, worn in battle uh, when UC was fighting frontline combat. Um, I chose these swords, you know, because they're big pieces. Uh, they struck me. And then also, uh, you know, that that name, that Busey name is something that is very familiar to me, as well as maybe some other folks out there who are familiar with Central Illinois. We have a prominent bank branch in Central Illinois and other places, um, uh, Busey Bank. Uh, Samuel, Samuel Busey's family would go on uh, to start the Busey Bank branch. And it's, you know, one of the more prominent bank branches within central Illinois here. Uh, so uh, I, as we were mentioning before, you know, whether it's with history or nature, uh, we always love to uh, try and have folks make connections between their lives and what we're interpreting at the museum or the interpretive center or through our programs. And this is something I really connected with because, you know, you immediately see that Busey name and you're struck like, wow, that is that is pretty cool to see that, uh, you know, uh, get a little bit more of the backstory of one individual from that Busey family who has a big name in Central Illinois. Um, here are the swords on display um, in that exhibit case. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Samuel uh, Busey is there on the left. Um, uh, and then these are his swords here being displayed in front of all of those names of individuals uh, who served in the Civil War from Champaign County fighting on the Union side. And this is just one of the cases. There's also a case to the left of this uh, that has more names and more artifacts and more interpretation. Uh, so if you haven't checked out this exhibit before, um, once we reopen, you know, come and visit us. Check it out. Pretty awesome exhibit space. 
lot to see, a lot to do. Uh, but in the meantime, you can also uh, visit our YouTube page where we have a short, about five minute or so virtual tour of this exhibit. Uh, give it a look, see, get a little snapshot, a little preview of that exhibit space while you're at home um, in these current times. So that's what I got uh, for my favorite thing. Um, so that's pretty much all we have, unless there's any questions out there from folks tuning in. Uh, but that's another edition of Mornings with the Museum. Does anybody uh, here within our group, you guys got any uh, parting words or any final thoughts uh, that you wanted to share with those watching? Um, I just wanted to say, like, be sure to try and get outside, even with the rainy weather. It, it really helps uh, my mood, at least. And all of our preserves, the trails are open, so please enjoy. Um, and we hope that we, we uh, can help in that way, to help improve your mood that way. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, definitely get out there. We were just talking right when we got on here. We need some sunshine. Um, we're in the midst of the days of gray. So I'm looking forward to the next small piece of sunshine, no matter how small it is. Anybody else? Dismiss everybody. Thanks for joining with us this morning. It was nice to visit with you, even though we couldn't see you. Yeah. Yep, just to piggyback off of that, you know, as Sandy mentioned, we miss you. Uh, you know, soon the Homer Lake and Interpretive Center and the Museum of the Grand Prairie, um, you know, will open up soon enough. Uh, but until then, you know, check us out on our, our social media pages, find us on YouTube even. Uh, we're putting out a whole bunch of digital content for you to have fun with while you're at home. But thanks again, everybody. Thanks for joining us.